This podcast is intended for educational purposes only. For our full disclosure, visit us at nc-midwifery.com and our podcast page. Welcome back to more about birth. We are very excited because we have a special guest in the studio today. Hey, ladies. Hi, we're back and we're here with a new scoop on the new birth center in the Tri-Cities. And we have a guest with us today. This is Cynthia Flynn. Um, Cynthia was one of my mentors back in the day when I was practicing to become a midwife. So we've known each other for quite a while. And I wanted her to share her story with us about wanting to leave a legacy for the women in this area. Because we had a birth center in the Tri-Cities years ago that Cynthia had started. And it's been quite a few years since that's been around. And I'm going to let her tell the story of how this new one has come about. The Tri-Cities hasn't had a birth center Mm -hmm. since 2007. And... Um, fast forward to last fall, um, and the babies are starting to have babies. <laughs> and so, um, one of the women that I knew, um, who was having her first baby, um, uh, was seeing a practice, uh, at Cadillac Hospital, uh, midwifery practice that I sort of mentored the leader to start because I had taught her. So when she um, added midwifery and then started the practice there, she um, came to me and we had a lot of lunches together and I helped her get that (laughs) practice started. And it's a great practice, you know, if you need to be at the hospital, it's a wonderful practice. But, um, and so this former baby of mine, um, had gone to that practice and was very happy with her prenatal care and her uh, labor and delivery care. Um, But afterwards, uh, was not as happy with how her baby was treated in the hospital. Um, And so um, I went to my friend, who was the lead midwife there, and said, gee, you know, this was her experience and it wasn't that great. And what can we do about that? And we were just like brainstorming, well, we need to do this, do this, do this. And and one of the things was we, we really do need to have another birth center because it wouldn't have happened. It would not have been a problem mm. at the birth center. Nothing, none of that would have happened. And so um, I started on this project and... I just decided, I talked to my husband, I said, look, I'm. it needs to be done. I've been talking to the midwives here for years, years and yeah. none of them are doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Present company included. Yep. And Someone's got to do it. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> and, and so it's a ton of work. Um, so I says, look, I'm, I'm just doing it. Um, you know, uh, start looking for space and... Uh, it's interesting. Landlords are not real excited about I'm having the all that babies plumbing. <laughs> no, it's the plumbing. It's the plumbing. <laughs> I mean, the you know, when you think about a room, showers. it's got a toilet and a sink and a tub and a shower. Yeah. And it's like a lot of plumbing in their building. <laughs> and then and then the rooms are gigantic. They're not like office sized, mm-hmm. you know. And so it's it really like totally... He does. Their, you know, yeah. their building is like uh, they're wow. thinking, "Oh my gosh, if this is a brand new business, and what if it goes under, and then yeah. I'm left with what? You know, th- tubs is weird." Uh, you know, setup. Know, <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of, where is this birth center? It's at 948 Stevens, uh, 200 feet from Cadillac Hospital. I mean, it's right there's one building between us and the hospital Could almost that's walk handy there faster than drive well, well, it's true <laughs> right across I mean, from where we used to go to the get ice cream cones so oh, tasty freeze oh, yeah. yeah tasty yeah, freeze yeah, was no, there coffee shop right uh, well, not sure anyway it's 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 right there. it's very very close we have half the building and to start and um 
yeah, it's a it's a great location, all on one floor. Just um, you know, it's 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 we're really super excited about it. But okay. yeah, we had to go through three landlords to get to it, and so and then this landlord, um, bless us, I mean, he not only you know put up the normal landlord amount, to, you know, to, for tenant improvements. He's an investor. He invested in the That's business awesome. too. Um, you know, he is committed to making this thing work, which is That's super great. exciting. Great. That's great. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, can we backtrack just a tiny sure. bit? And for our listeners um, who don't know you, just give us a brief background of your history and <laughs> like, who are you and why do you even care about birth? And because people probably don't know what you've oh, done. Well, we don't have that much time. <laughs> <laughs> the nutshell the version. Synopsis. <laughs> the nutshell version. Uh, a lot led up to my going to midwifery school at Yale University at age 47. Yale. Wow. And See, uh, I didn't know that. I yeah, love that. I mean, that's a whole other crazy story. You don't have that much time. <laughs> but I, and then there's a whole other crazy story about how I ended up in the Tri-Cities, where I knew zero people straight out of school um, and started practice when I was 50. It's um, never and, too late. Yeah, never too late. And uh, I had been a doula. I was a founding mother of doulas in North America, and they still use my little questionnaire. When you're wow. getting certified, you have to hand out, you know. Yeah evaluation things they're That's they're cool. still using the exact same form from Cynthia's totally a birth junkie just from uh, way yeah. back well just way that's what I was getting at like you're a midwife like you have oh yeah you're not just a person that wanted to start so you're like center. you're <laughs> like a part of midwife trivia now <laughs> yeah. I, and, and you know and eventually like I say after I started this birth center that I got all involved and in, I get involved in stuff anyway <laughs> I, uh, I ended up you know, president of the American Association of Birth Centers. And so wow. I have been to birth centers all over the country, picked whatever I could from them that, you know, oh, that's a neat way to do that. And, yeah. Um, all that. And I am also very involved in advocacy, you know, trying to make birth centers accessible for women. Um, so all these great things that you picked and chose from all these other birth centers, are they going to be in our birth yes. center? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> well, yeah. I just think it's interesting, too, that we were just talking about how Cynthia's done all the whole gamut, hospital, mm -hmm. home birth, and birth center birth. So, And I do consider home birth the gold standard. It is. I, I, I think... A lot of people just aren't quite emotionally ready for that. Though. Well, it, or they don't have the right space or they're too far away or, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of reasons why it doesn't work. And then plus, you've got the midwife spending time driving around instead of taking care of women. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, it's, it's like inefficient, I guess you'd say. Um, but so the birth center is a place that's really... It's not in the woman's home, and that's important, you know, an important distinction. But other than that, it's it's like a home birth. It's I mean, home birth at the birth center, yeah. It is. It's, yeah. it's like home birth at my house instead of your house. Well, we tease people and tell them with home birth, it's like being in a birth center because we carry everything with us that the birth center has. We just haul it all to your house. Except you don't have a jetted tub. <laughs> well, we have tubs, but no, we don't have any jets. Yeah, we get a straw are... and blow in it. <laughs> <laughs> On that note about jetted tubs, tell us what the birth center is going to be like. Like what's going to be there? And and how big is a jetted tub? <laughs> it's, it's big enough to move around however you want. <laughs> <There> you <go. laughs> I, once count, I once counted I know, a woman. I now want to visit the birth center. <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, I, I once counted during one contraction this first time mom changed positions 20 times like a cat on a hot tin roof oh, yeah. Yeah. Just way. Way. Yeah, yeah anyway <laughs> she got that baby out fast too i anyway um <laughs> so the birth center has a very large like family room um with you know flat screen tv and and couches and a kitchenette area and all that um it has an area that's that you use if you're just coming for prenatal care. So it has, you know, the bathroom, it has 
two large exam rooms, you know, like room for your kids mm -hmm. and all that. And then it has a midwife kind of work room that has like medications and a microscope and computers and stuff. Um, if you're coming for birth, there's three large rooms, like 300 or more square feet. Um, you, of course, have your own potty and your tub and your shower and your bed and all that, um, and sinks and cabinets and a place to store your stuff. But, I mean, um, we have three birth rooms. Um, uh, no, will they all look alike? or They all look different, actually. Oh, um, fun. The, there We have the river room, which will, among other things, have pictures of, like, the Yakima, the Columbia, and, you know, oh, cool. like that. And, um, and, like, river rocks around the um, tub and, you know, like the countertops. I kind of have that look. Fun. That's uh, cool. cool. So that's the river room. And then we have the mountain room, you know, badger rattlesnake, whatever, pictures, mm -hmm. um, that's like the cave uh, for people who, like, want to go under the front porch and hide from everybody <laughs> to have their baby. Um, it's dark, um, you know, dark um, backsplashes around the tub and countertops so cool. and a, a, a one wall that's practically black. I mean, that must I mean, have been fun to yeah, it's, think it's, about it's, all it's, that. It, it's like... It's the smallest. It's well. It's just under three hundred square feet. But I mean, it's um, it's like the cave room. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have the bridge room. You know, the blue bridge, the cable bridge, the you know whatever the bridges. And um, but anyway, the point is that w the rooms will have different feels to them. Oh, um, that's so where cool. We'll let women, you know, say what their preference is. You know, that'll be in their chart. And if we can, we'll accommodate. Right. You know, they'll mm -hmm. get the pick which one they want to go to. Now, when they come in That's fun. for a birth in labor, will they have a separate entrance that they can come in? Um, no, they'll come in through the family room. Uh -huh. And then the whole uh, birth area is has got its own door, and it's separate. So it's separate from it everything is, else? It is separate, yeah. So you can be doing prenatals oh, yeah. it's at the a same whole time as area. people are birthing. <clears throat> right, Great. it's a whole different Great. area. And, uh, and there's... We completely rebuilt the whole thing so there's soundproofing in the mm -hmm. walls. I mean, I don't know how so good how it's going to be, but <laughs> how much total square feet? I mean, you have half uh, that about building. About 3,800. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. And so then we have a big utility area, you know, with all that cleaning and all that. Mm -hmm. And we have a break room for the midwives. And we have another area where we store things like oxygen, nitrous oxide. Ooh, tell uh, us about the nitrous oxide. Laughing gas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Takes the edge off. Um, and it's totally mother controlled. Um, you know, the mom decides. So how for those of you who don't know what that is, that is a gas like you get when you go to the dentist. Mm -hmm. And it has been used in labor to help reduce pain and help you relax. And it's pretty awesome. Yeah. So it sounds like the birth center will offer that to yep. anyone that would like it. Yep. Awesome. That's great. And I'll be over later today. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> Except staff. Staff does a good I'm one. just kidding. <laughs> I know. I just. Speaking of staff. Yeah. And that. then we also have a big um, classroom, you know, with a big, oh, yeah. uh, big screen, you know, for, and, and then we can do movies there. We can do group prenatal care. We could have prenatal yoga. You know, what about breastfeeding support? Is that going to be an ongoing? Oh thing? yeah, yeah. That's Open to the community beach. or just either? Yeah, that's that's a particular interest of mine. I teach um, beginning RN students breastfeeding every mm -hmm. term mm -hmm. um, as a guest speaker. Um, teach them how to help moms, right? Um, because most RNs are not really taught how to help. I mean, they're taught about the, you know, the Mechanics anatomy it, and right. everything. Yeah, of right, yeah. That's different than teaching how to teach a right. mom. So mm -hmm. anyway, yeah, I teach how to teach. Uh, and it's a big interest of mine is um, getting moms off to a good start right. on breastfeeding. Huge, huge interest. So yes, we will definitely have that available. So moving That'll along, be <laughs> I have been very curious about like, how many midwives will be working there and how many births you'll be doing a month, that kind of thing, and insurance. Okay, well, we're going to start with basically two and a half midwives so that we're, you know, we care a lot about 
the quality of life that midwives have so that they're not like on call all the time. Um, and, um, uh, the maximum, the absolute maximum that the place can hold as far as I'm concerned would be, um, 25 births a month would be the max. I don't, I mean, it'll take us a while to get there. Mm -hmm. Um, which would be about four midwives plus one to cover their vacations and admin and things like that. So five. Um, so it's, it's never going to be, you know, a cast of thousands there. It, it, it always be small enough so that you're going to know your midwives and who's going to be there and all that. It's, it's not like you're going to have to have a tour like a hospital tour or something, because you will have, be coming there all the time. And, you know, you'll know the people there. And um, it's meant to be a place that feels familiar when you come to have your baby. How will the insurance work? Is that... We're um, in the process. Like we're in the process of getting credentialed with all the insurance companies, including Medicaid and all that. Um uh, until we are credentialed with everything, you know, we are still taking insurance at, on an out of network basis. Um, but you know, uh, as fast as we can, we'll get in network. And did I hear that you're doing prenatals now Yeah, to get ready for births when February? Wow. That's coming Ooh, up soon. It's exciting. And those that actually want to come to us now that are due in February are going to have a lot of prenatal visits real soon because I mean because there's a lot of work to do to get ready for a birth center birth yeah. um, you know a lot of education yeah um, and playing catch up paperwork and yeah uh -huh. there's a lot of catch up to do so um, yeah you'll be having extra visits <laughs> probably that sounds to awesome. get it all done along those lines could you could you just give an outline for people of what care looks like like how often do they come in and what does the postpartum care look like well, um, we typically will do it like you would if you were going to an obstetrician, like um, every four weeks until um, you get up to 28 weeks, and then you go every two weeks, and then every one week from 36 weeks on, like that. However, um, we really tailor that to the woman. Um, so some people who've had babies, particularly babies with us before, mm -hmm. it's like they don't need to come that They're many like, times. They're like, can I just come every five weeks? Yeah, or can <laughs> I, you know, I live down in Pendleton. Can I do yeah. some of these telehealth, yeah. really? Mm -hmm. um, so a lot, that's just like the generic thing, but um, I, we will be tailoring it to what the woman's needs are, both medically right. and, and otherwise. I mean, the idea is to personalize personalize the care mm -hmm. i mean we're small enough you're not going to be a number um and then um so that part is pretty much the same i like we'll do this offer the same kind of testing you would get anywhere and we don't we, there's very little we require i like you to have a 20 week ultrasound just make sure the so will you baby's parts are all together will but you send those, out? <laughs> those will be sent out the ultrasounds or we do them um, the anatomy scan, the 20 week one, we will send out, mm -hmm. but, um, one of our midwives does do limited ultrasound. So, you know, dating, um, biophysical profiles, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. We can do those in house. What about right. lab work? Will that be in? We'll send, we will. We have to send draw it to the lab. It. Yeah. We can draw it and, and then, then send, send it, it to the lab. Okay. Yeah. Like that. So all that part is, you know, you'd be offered the same thing be offered anywhere mm -hmm. um and then you come in you have the baby <laughs> when would they come in um when you're in active labor um so somewhere around five six centimeters for a first time mom sooner for if you've had a baby before those tend to go a little quicker so that ish um and you've met all of the midwives providing care oh, at yeah. this point so that Whoever you get on call, you'll know them. And one of the things that we're really very committed to keeping an eye on is that although every midwife has a different personality, how they practice is not going to vary at all. Mm -hmm. Same doesn't... rules for everybody. Even what they say almost. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, just really the kind of care you're going to get, yeah. is it isn't going to matter. 
who you get because that's right. one of the things I'm really committed to is if somebody feels like they'd like to do it different, then let's talk about it, figure it out, and we'll all do it the same. Because uh, I don't want women worrying about who's on call. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, sh it should feel just fine no matter who's on call. Now, just to play devil's advocate here, what's going to happen if a mom comes in and ends up with this 30-hour labor? Is she going to start feeling pushed? Like, okay, we got to get this room emptied out, woman. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we got to move you through this line so we're walking into the hospital. Like, how does that How does that work? No, we don't do that. Um, <laughs> for, for one, I mean, you know, the, there, it, even if we were at 25 births, a month. That's still a hundred births per room for uh -huh. the year. So the, basically so the safe. room, yeah, the room gets two days off and one day <laughs> on. I mean, you know, I, it's, I, I don't think that's going to be a problem. And, you know, even if, if it seems like it's going along really long and somebody else comes in, it's really mm -hmm. fast and all the things, I mean, we can, accommodate somebody yeah. in either the family room or one of the exam rooms in early labor mm -hmm. if we have to. Yeah. I, I I don't see that happening for a long time, if ever. But, but if I understand right, families are welcome at the birth. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Um the one thing that we um say to people is that uh do not invite a scaredy cat. Because yeah. I I have a rule that if anybody at the birth says, oh, I'm I'm nervous, so I, I want to go, I think she should be at the hospital, we have to go. Oh, wow. Okay. Even if the, if the mom's okay, I'm okay, the dad's okay, but grandpa isn't, <laughs> we have to go. And the reason is, if something does happen later, and then grandma kind of says, see, I told you we yeah. should have gone. You better yeah. sue them. I, you know, we're just yeah, not doing well. that. We're not doing that. So I do go through all that with new moms and say, look, be careful who you invite. You yeah. want people who are going to support you mm -hmm. and yeah. who understand things and who are going to be part of the team. Sure. Not just Which we've party. learned that's the same as home births. You yeah. want people yeah, there. Definitely. They're going to be supporting yeah. the process. Right. So And not making things difficult. Right. I have a question. How many exam rooms? Two. Two. Yeah. So yeah. you have three rooms plus the family room, and then you have the two exam rooms. Yep. So you have lots of space to handle We're 25. We're postpartum. So baby's born, everybody's good and happy. Right. And usually people go home four to six hours. I, I, I'm a firm believer the safest place for a newborn is their own home because the mom has antibodies to everything in that house yep. and will you know, give them to her baby via breast milk. So that's the safest place for a newborn that's stable. And if she's stable, and then we come um, and make a 24 hour home visit, um, just check, make sure everything's okay. And then typically um, I'm just giving kind of the standard here uh -huh. is that they, the couple that would come in um, at about three days and we would, double check them over again. That's usually when her milk is coming in and get mm -hmm. all that organized. And then at two weeks and six weeks, we would see them again. Okay. So Great. the midwives at the birth center are trained to take care of healthy newborns for that Absolutely. first period. You don't need a pediatrician. All right. No, typically we recommend that they go to their pediatrician when the baby's about two weeks old. Well, After that, what yeah. would happen? What would it look like if you did need to transport to a hospital? Say, baby wasn't, baby's heart rate was dipping uh, a little, and yeah, what um, happens then? Most of the transports from birth centers nationally are not what you call time of the essence thing. Right, like, we have to get there right now, or somebody. Yeah, we always order. say you can see the train wreck coming. Right, <laughs> there's well, signs. you can, yeah. and, and it's <laughs> our signs. job, you know, and so. Most of the transports are, um, you know, they could be on the urgent side or maybe not. Maybe just uh, somebody's baby is not in a good position and she really cannot manage the pain and mm -hmm. she needs an epidural. She's going to have a vaginal birth. Uh, and so there's no big rush. She's fine. The baby's fine. She just needs to be somewhere else. Um, so most of the transports are of that type. Right. Uh, and in that case, um, the 
there is a door outside that um, next to the birth rooms and the animals can pull right up there. It doesn't have to go through the lobby or anything like that. And, it, and it's just right outside the doors to the Perfect. birth rooms. And then they just go right around the corner to the. Yeah, hospital. the good news is it's is like that you can really almost throw, you can almost throw a rock to the hospital from oh, where your person is at. Put them in a rolling chair and just push them there frisbee, quickly. A frisbee will go there for sure. I know. <laughs> that well, will, it's true. That you will can, be reassuring. Yeah, I to mean, it's just to be that it's, close to the it's hospital, right? There. right. Yeah, I think people are going to love that option. Yeah. And the other thing is, if it's not a time of the essence thing, if it's you know one of those ordinary things that actually could be taken care of by a hospital midwife. Mm -hmm. Well, I just sent them that practice that there I was talking go. about earlier. There you go. Um, they will take our transports. And if, they, if we do need an obstetrician, they are part of the obstetrician group at Cabin. Mm -hmm. So those obstetricians will take care of us. Sounds like you've got it all covered. Maybe well, it's just a guy thing, but I've had this burning question since you said it earlier. How do you have a half a midwife? <laughs> she works half time. Oh, okay. Part -time. I'm just maybe it's just the way my mind works, okay. but yeah, no, which, works. which half comes to the birds? Yeah. Oh, yeah. she, she works part time about uh -huh. like V backs. And yeah, so like that. just um, for people that are going to be wondering what kinds of things um, would risk you out from delivering at the birth center. Well, some things are a matter of state law. We don't have any choice about it. We can't deliver twins or breaches or um, people who have had a prior cesarean or uterine surgery at birth centers as of now. Um, so those people automatically. Um, then people who have serious medical conditions, like, I mean, I had somebody coming to me once. She'd already had a heart valve replaced and oh, she wow. wanted to have a birth center birth. I said, you're not even a midwife candidate <laughs> yeah. if a yeah. hospital, no. never yeah. mind. Yeah. I'm sorry, but, you know, we don't, you know, so people who have, you know, serious medical mm -hmm. histories, yeah. Um, and so there are things like that that um, increase the chance that there's going to be a problem yeah. anyway. Uh, or we already know that they're going to need medical care, like mm -hmm. people who already are diabetic before they ever get pregnant yeah. are going to need, we already know they're going to need care at yeah. the hospital. So there are people, it, it's not for everyone. The birth center is for normal, healthy women having normal, or I should say birthing people, not necessarily women, um, who are having um Normal pregnancies, boring pregnancies, uh, boring yeah. pregnancies uh -huh. with healthy babies. Yep. And um, we have every reason to think that they can birth their own babies. Um, I thought of a question. You mentioned um, tubs in the rooms. Is that just for laboring or can people deliver in the water? Oh, they can absolutely deliver in the water. That's so, my experience is that's mm -hmm. so much nicer. Yeah. Um, um, women... <sighs> almost can't help it, especially with those jets on. They just relax. They, they get in that tub and it's just, it's like a reflex. And they get into this pattern, you know, with, and we have to turn the jets off to listen to the baby's heartbeat every half hour. And, you know, and they just, they're in, in a zone kind of like. And when it comes time to have the baby, things just seem to stretch easier mm -hmm. and women are not so frantic. Yeah. You know, like, you know, like you see on TV sometimes. That was a great face. They're, they're, <laughs> they, they, I mean, really, I'm not saying that they're, it's not intense because, I mean, yeah. having a baby is an intense thing. But it, they're much more in control, frankly, um, mm. relaxed. Um, they, they're they much more in touch with what's going on. They aren't, like, losing it. And as a consequence, they're able to ease the baby out more often and have fewer terrors yep. and um you know it's a lot easier on the midwife frankly <laughs> somebody was asking me about water birth the other day at a consult and i said well honestly there's less mess with water birth because it's like all contained yeah. in one spot you know so that's a bonus there's that besides are you going to offer like tours of the birth center if people are interested oh absolutely yeah um it's not quite finished being constructed yet so not i 
uh, we have a Facebook page, uh, Columbia after the river, Columbia Birth Center um, hyphen Richland. And we'll put a link on the screen. Yeah, the old one was um, Kennewick. Um, and uh, as soon as we get the website up, <laughs> we'll have Isn't that the, too, the, ColumbiaBirthCenter.com. The website for the old birth center is still up, isn't it? It still is. I mean, if you want to go and see how it was at the old birth center, and they there and we had videos uh, that made usually about two hours after the baby mm -hmm. was born that have about three pixels in them. I mean, you can't. Yeah, it's uh -huh. old school. <laughs> I mean, it, uh, you can't do it on your phone. Only you this generation would your, know what yeah, pixels are. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, so, it's like anyway. You could see how it was. Is there going to be a grand opening or something like yeah, a launch date? Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, and I, I. Wish I could tell you when that is. <laughs> it's after Christmas, though, right? After Christmas. Yeah. After New Year's. <laughs> after New Sometime Year's. Sometime in January is what I would guess. Oh. Uh, well, I mean, I'm doing tours for people now. But it's yeah. I'm ready. Let's go have a tour. It's a construction site still. I mean, they're doing mudding the walls, painting next week. You know, I mean, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. We're, yeah. Go we're not there yet, but. We would love to bring a camera and do a little behind scenes for oh, you too. Oh, that'd be fun. We are, we do have access to an adjacent space. As I said, we have this really great landlord. So we are starting prenatal care um, in the adjacent space uh -huh. until we can get into the actual space. Sounds like That's you cool. guys awesome. are just getting ready to do it. We're excited. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Thanks yeah. for coming today. Um, any other questions you guys can think of? I'm just so excited to see um, what this is going to add to the community here. We need this. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. And just like we were talking earlier about, um, even if you're not a client necessarily, but being able to utilize some of the services of the birth center, mm -hmm. like mom get together groups and the videos um, where, you know, birth education nights and yeah. that sort of, it's just going to be fun. That's what I hope. Yeah. yeah. Be great. Yep. Thank you so much for coming. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks, and Maria. we'll be seeing you soon for that tour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> woo woo. This podcast is intended for educational purposes only. For our full disclosure, visit us at nc-midwifery.com and our podcast page.